You probably don't realize how much time is spent trying to figure out how to pay for education in Kansas and Missouri. Did you know, for instance, that in Kansas last year, 62% of the entire budget went to fund schools and universities? It's so important that even the courts have gotten involved setting up one of the most contentious fights in this legislative session. But should judges be telling lawmakers how much they should be spending in the classroom? As Sam Zeff reports, it's an issue you could soon be deciding at the ballot box as the clash over education funding turns into a battle over how the state picks its judges. Universal education for all is one of the key principles in our democratic society. How is this principle working here at home in Kansas? This story really begins at a time when news was shot on film, at a time when men wore hats and ladies wore gloves. The story reaches all the way back to a one-term, little-known governor from Dodge City who was desperate to hold on to his political career. You see, if it wasn't for Fred Hall and a scheme he cooked up that was dubbed the Triple Play, we probably wouldn't be here right now. Thank you all for your... Uh prompt attendance on what's going to be a very, very busy day. Moving on to the Court of Appeals. This is the Kansas Senate Judiciary Committee holding hearings last week on a plan that has the legal world in the state on the edge of its seat. Its chairman is Senator Jeff King from Independence. We are the only state in the union where the members of the bar control the process for the judges that they appear in front of. Uh, that's a problem, in my opinion. and. In my six years in office talking to my constituents, I think they perceive it as a problem as well. There are essentially three ways to pick judges. You can elect them, which Kansas did until 1959. You can do it the way the federal government does, the chief executive appoints and the Senate confirms. Or there's merit selection, where a commission recommends a list of nominees to the governor. And that's what we have in Kansas. The Kansas system rests on undemocratic politics. More than any of the other 49 states, we have an undemocratic system. Stephen Ware is a law professor at the University of Kansas. The nominating commission is composed of nine people, five lawyers chosen by the Bar Association and four non-lawyers picked by the governor, giving lawyers, Ware argues, way too much power in picking the judges they appear before. Not only does the current Kansas system concentrate a tremendous amount of power in a very small group of people, but then it allows them to exercise that power in a secret vote behind closed doors. The votes of the Kansas Supreme Court Nominating Commission are secret. If the way Kansas picks judges is so undemocratic, why do we have it? Well, it was born from political intrigue that involved the state's highest officials. In any story, context is king, and that's especially true in this piece. That's why we're here at the Kansas State Historical Society in Topeka. And that's where we found this editorial from the Kansas City Times from January 1957. The headline is, A Brazen Raw Deal for Kansas Justice. This is what the Times had to say. The deal was cloaked in deepest secrecy. This indicated that the participants were fearful of public reaction and did not believe it could stand the light of day. Involve was not merely a political appointment, it was an appointment to the highest court in the state. This editorial and many others was railing against what has become to be known as the triple play. The scheme involved Governor Hall, who was running for re-election in 1956 but lost in the Republican primary. The other two players, Lieutenant Governor John McKeish and the Chief Justice of the State Supreme Court, Bill Smith. Let's get the record straight. I have not broken any laws. Hall was ambitious and loved the new medium of television, but controversy dogged him during his one term, even his wife dyeing her hair blonde rock Topeka. Chief Justice Smith was at the time very ill, active in Republican politics, and worried if he retired, the newly elected Democratic governor, George Docking, would appoint a Democrat. As for Lieutenant Governor McKeish, well, he was simply compliant. He was in the hospital in Newton, his hometown, uh, John McKish, uh, and uh, was dismissed on Thursday, picked up by the highway patrol and driven back, uh, Thursday morning driven back to Topeka so he could be involved in this. So here's the triple play. On December 31st, 1956, Smith sent this letter to the Secretary of State resigning as Chief Justice. On January 3rd, 1957, Hall sent a similar letter, quitting just 11 days before his term ended. This automatically elevated McKeish to governor, who immediately appointed Hall to the state's highest court, 
and the triple play was done. He wanted to remain active in Kansas politics, and he may have uh, always thought that he would come back and try again. Virgil Dean is a Kansas historian who has studied Fred Hall and the triple play. Staging the triple play, uh, I think really underscored, hey, we've got a problem here. We want a more impartial, less political judiciary or Supreme Court, and so it's time for a change. The triple play caused a public outrage. In 1957, the legislature passed a constitutional amendment calling for the merit system we now have. The next year, with 58% of the vote, the people approved it, which loops us back to the Kansas State House of 2013. Between you and me, what's really going on here? Well, Sam, I think what's going on is that the current governor uh, wants to control the selection of our appellate court judges. John Vrattel is a Republican and former vice president of the Kansas Senate. He now controls the executive branch of government, he controls the legislative branch of government, and he wants to control the judicial branch as well. I think that Governor Brownback also fears a court decision on school finance. Um, and if he can select the people who are on that appellate court, his fears go away. And there it is, the issue behind the issue. In 2005, the state Supreme Court ruled Kansas wasn't spending enough money on education and ordered the legislature to come up with $290 million more. Conservative Republicans saying the court was legislating from the bench were furious. There are people in the legislature who are not, oh, who do not believe that what the Supreme Court did in a certain case was correct. And so... Well, tell me about that. What well, is it? I think that the thing that was motivating a lot of this was school finance. Crystal Marquardt yeah, just retired last week from the Court of Appeals, like and she agrees system. this proposed well, constitutional change is a power grab to control so, the future well, of school finance. Place. Why you? Why the Court of Appeals? Why now? Because the governor, I think, believes at this point that he's got the political clout to get done what he wants to get done. Uh, and maybe he does. But current Senate Vice President Jeff King couldn't disagree more. He says this is about more democracy and fewer lawyers. So the criticism that this all goes back to school funding, out of play. Can I say for sure what everyone's motivation is? I can certainly say for my own this has nothing to do with school funding. This has nothing to do with any one case, nor should it. Do you think that there has been scandal or infamy uh, within the Court of Appeals or Supreme Court uh, justices. I mean, is there, has, been, has there been something that uh, would say, you know what, we have to change the Constitution to make this better? I have, I have not personally known of any scandal or anything um, improper in the Court of Appeals of the Supreme Court. I think our Supreme Court justices and our Court of Appeals judges uh, have done are good men and women that have done a good job. I didn't realize this, but Kansas used to elect our state Supreme Court. I'd be supportive of returning to that system or going to the federal model of judicial selection. Either passes the democracy test that our current system fails. There is little doubt a constitutional amendment to change the way appellate court judges are picked is going to pass the Kansas legislature and most likely appear on the ballot in August of next year, setting up former Senator John Rattle says an expensive and ugly campaign. No doubt in my mind that's what will happen. There will be massive amounts of money raised and spent in campaigning for and against that constitutional amendment. Where's the money going to come from? It's going to come from the Koch brothers in Wichita. It'll be unlike any constitutional amendment campaign that, that I've seen in my lifetime. And not only Coke money, but he says millions of dollars from trial lawyers and other special interests. But Senator King says now is the time to have this debate. My hope and belief as an elected official in the state of Kansas is that the voters of Kansas can see through the negative misinformation and get to the, the valid points of the issue. But at least you think the school funding controversy is over, it's not. 
It was reignited last week when the Shawnee County District Court ruled once again that Kansas isn't sufficiently funding K-12 education and ordered lawmakers to find $440 million more. That case will be appealed. The question is, how will the judges who hear that appeal be chosen? That report by Sam Zeff. Lead funding of KCPT's reporting of education issues is funded in part by a generous grant from the Kauffman Foundation and additional civic funders.